So, welcome along to the live stream, Farnham Town against Abbey Rangers. Big game in the league after the momentous win on Saturday, really, to make it 19 wins from 19. That marked the halfway point, and now we enter the second half of the campaign, and it's a big test. Harry Hugo alongside me. What can we expect tonight? Yeah, big, big game tonight. Um, Abbey, Abbey are a good side. Uh, they're, they're, up, they're up there, and they've been up there for the last few seasons as well. So, there's, there's no, no kidding that this, this Abbey side is good. They're very together. Um, it's not a team, and I don't think they'll mind me saying this, they're not, not a team for the star names, but they've been together for a long time. And uh, that, that really does bode well in this league. And they'll be a really tough test today. Um, I think it'll be quite interesting to see how they set up, because we've seen lots of different ways to play against Farnham, you know, employed over the course of the last 19 matches in the league. And, uh, and no one's got it right yet. So. You know, it'll be it'll be interesting to see a, one of the better teams in the league, see how they set up, see how they've been thinking about us. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see Farnham Town, a couple of players out. Uh, Joe Jackson and Jack Dean dropped to the bench, slight injury doubts, and uh, and Lewis Flatman and Owen Dean serving their last games of their suspension. So, you know, probably a a, 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 a less full strength Farnham side than you'd want playing against third in the league, but. It's still got plenty of quality there to, to make a difference. Any concerns over Brandon Kalou playing out of position tonight? You know, Meaton slotting in at centre back as well. Obviously, he's capable of playing there, but it's far from a settled back four. And as, as you say, against a very capable opposition. All I, all I would say is we've we've been chopping and changing our back four due to injuries all season. You know, when even when Guy was here, uh, and obviously he left for Farnborough last week, and we wish him good luck. You know the, the first choice starting back four that you'd have had at the start of the season with Jack Dean at right back, Guy, Ryan, and then left back Tom Smith. Over the course of the season, maybe Joe Jackson. Both of those potential back fours have played zero minutes together, and we've chopped and changed over the course of the season because of injuries to Guy, to Tom Smith, to Jack Dean, um, Joe Jackson. You know um, Max Meaton as well, and it's actually only Ryan who's been the mainstay alongside Pat Nash in the back five. So does it concern me players playing out of position? Yeah, because we're playing a good side tonight, but at the same time, it's not something we're not used to. And we're very fortunate to have a very strong six in front of them, and especially the two boys in front of them in Lamar and Cooksey, who have, uh, who've also started nearly every single game and, and have been a, a real force in that, in that central area, defending and attacking. And I think we were speaking before we went on air that I think we were expecting a big Daryl Sanders performance tonight. It wasn't maybe his best day on Saturday. You know, it was a comfortable win and he played well, but the fireworks that yourself and see from Sanders, maybe tonight's tonight we see that from him. Yeah, look, he when he's played in the big games for us, unfortunately he missed the the Vars game that we got knocked out in and also the FA Cup game that we got knocked out in. Um, and read into that what you will, but... You know, when it's mattered, he, he stepped up for us in the league. I think Red Hill away is probably the best example of that. You know, it's a, it was a game organised at very short notice and it was a very, very cold Tuesday night against a really good side in Redhill. And, you know, he was he was man-marked. That was the tactic that they, they employed over the course of that 90 minutes to man-mark Daryl. And, um, you know, he, he probably got a number done on him for, for 40, 45 minutes. But the second half, it, it became the start of the show and, and you saw that free kick. I mean, it's, it's been very well received online. It, it really is an amazing free kick. And then he just turned it on again for the next sort of, 10, 15 minutes, killed the game and that was it. I think we're also going to be, um, you know, seeing the, the value of Adam Little coming back into the side. He obviously missed three games due to a suspension. I thought he was really, really good on Saturday, having, you know, been, been out for, for nearly a month due to, due to postponements. And uh, he looked really, really sharp, and I think he will only get sharper and sharper with the minutes that he's going to play. Players now in the tunnel, getting ready to come out. Running maybe just a few minutes behind here. I think some Abbey Rangers players were a little bit late. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they were about four short until about 7.10. Um, I'm not sure if that's made a difference into their starting 11 or their normal pre-match preparations but they didn't they haven't been out warming up for that long probably about 20 to 25 minutes Farnham normally out for 35 to 40 and lots of opposition managers do comment on that to me about how early we go out for the warm-up but it's a routine it's a routine that Farnham has stuck to all season and it's, been, and it's paid off indeed it has you've heard it so many times but 19 wins from 19 games doesn't happen by luck something special certainly building here 
can the second half of the campaign come anywhere close to what we've seen, the, the wonderful football we've seen in the first half of 2023-24 as the players come out. Welcome to this coverage of Farnham Town versus Abbey Rangers. The beginning of the second half of the campaign and it's a very tough test for Farnham tonight. Lining up for them is in goal Pat Nash. Brandon Kalou plays at right back as Joe Jackson has to drop out of the team. Max Meeting comes in for Jack Dean alongside Ryan Kinane and Tom Smith is at left back. In midfield it's Harry Cooksley and Lamar Caroma. In the attacking midfield positions it's Daryl Sanders and Dean Rule. And up front it's Adam Liddle and Shamal Levwoods. On the bench tonight, Charlie Postance, Kai Tanner, Jack Dean and Joe Jackson. Yeah, pretty much notable there. Charlie Postance on the bench um, scored 35 goals for Abbey Rangers last season. There'll be a lot of friends in this team, uh, in this Abbey team with with Charlie. So uh, yeah, he'll be looking to come off the bench and make a big impact in, in the late stages of this game, as he has done over the course of this season. So that's definitely one to watch in terms of the narratives. Um, but this Abbey Rangers team will work hard. It's a, it's a hard-working, athletic team. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of mainstays over the car last few seasons, and and that will and has done, um, you know, proven very very well this season as it has in the last few seasons too. And the playoffs, you know, despite them not being a thing over the last couple of seasons, they would have been qualified for the playoffs over the last three seasons. Worth well, also saying that there's a massive game in the level above us today uh, in Chertsey Leatherhead. We'll try and keep you up to date with uh, the goals that go in there. Uh, but that will definitely hurt our attendance tonight and and so should it. It is a proper proper game at step four and uh, Chertsey hosts Leatherhead. That's also first versus third. So that's one to keep an eye out. I think the only other game in our league this evening is uh, Jersey away at Epsom and Yule. Uh, an important game at both sides of the table. Uh, Jersey obviously looking for that playoff place and Epsom and Yule looking to stay out of relegation. Yeah, big big night for Abbey Rangers. It's a, it's going to be a battle right down to the wire for the last or for those remaining playoff places. Obviously, plenty up for grabs, and they're third at the moment. Yeah, and it, it's about putting points on the board now uh, for for teams like Abbey, teams like Jersey, Naphill, uh, Tadley, Redhill, Croydon, um, even Ballam, Alton, Fleet. You know, you've got plenty of teams up there that are looking uh, to get into that playoff spot for the first time in Step Five and uh, it's very, very valuable. So, um, yeah, I'm sure this, as much as it is a free hit for Abbey tonight, it's an opportunity for them to take three points basically over the entire rest of the league. And it will be them that get us underway. Ryan Kinane wins a, uh, a, to a toss, which he yeah. apparently hasn't won for five games. <laughs> Breaks the streak. Referee I don't recognise. No. Looks like Howard Webb come with... <laughs> More Anthony Taylor. Anthony Taylor, yeah, he does. A bit younger than Howard Webb. Slimmer. Yeah. So, where we go. Abby kicking from right to left. And Max Meaton might have a lot of those headers to deal with tonight, playing at centre-back. Different job for him. Same for Brandon Kalou, who kicks his game off with a good tackle at right-back. Gives it away, but that tackle will give him some confidence. Another header from Meaton. But it's an early chance here for Abby. And the shot there from Murdoch, just over the bar. Good chance. Um, he struck it really well, Ross Murdoch. He was a player that we looked at last season. He did really, really well at Frimley Green uh, and then came into this Abby Rangers team. Uh, at the start of the season, he was looking like he was going to partner. Um, I can't remember his name. Could play for. Uh, his name's Will. Will Kendall played for uh, Collegewood last season. Looked like he was going to be the, the strike partner for Ross Murdoch, but he instead went and followed Jamie De Cruz to Merston. And it was another early chance there. We saw Farnham on Saturday give away a couple chances early on. Maybe it just takes a few minutes for the sort of makeshift defence to gel together. I might see that a bit tonight, but Farnham soon settled in. And here's Tom Smith looking to launch an attack for them. Dean Rules dropped quite deep. He played well on Saturday. A couple of goal involvements. Kanane's long ball forward tests Kalou's touch. Now Cooksley. Outnumbered a little bit, so he'll look for the switch where Tom Smith is really all alone. Really good, that is. Dean Rule again coming deep to support. Here's Little, another man who likes to come and pick up the ball. Cooksley. 
Here's Brandon Kalou. Fine, I'm happy to keep the ball at the moment, but great pass. Dale Sanders crosses in early, and Edwards is there. Oh, what a chance. And there was a crucial bit of defending there, which denied Edwards, put him off, even if there wasn't a touch on the defender. What a great chance. What a great, great little move in behind here between Cooksey and, and Sanders and Lidl. It was a brilliant cross, and Chams really should put that away. But like you said, defended it really well just to, just to put him off in front of him. Yeah, fun and patient football there. Crafted open the opportunity. It was lovely from Lidl. That's what you get from him. You probably don't get from other forwards in the in the Farnham roster. Kalu staying tight to Cooper Smith there. He's their danger man, number 10. Uh, very good player, very experienced. Played lots of seasons here at Abbey. Um, bit of an Abbey mainstay. And um, you'll see over the course of the evening that a lot of the Abbey play will go through him. Anthony Taylor not happy. <laughs> Cooksey back to Kalu. Looked to be caught late there, but Tom Smith picks it up anyway. Great touch. Dean Rule calling for it. He's in a good run of form at the moment, Dean Rule. And again, far and patient with the ball. Here's Tom Smith. And now Little. And Kalu's calling for it on the right flank. It's Cooksey though. Karoma and Dean Rule and his attempted pass there to Sanders just off target and they yeah, just commit a the foul bit of there. The Better from Farnham though, settled quickly after that, giving away that early chance. Yeah, Abby will be well aware of the threat that Farnham pose. Not many teams able to come here and get a result. None in fact in the league. But they know they'll get chances. It's all about taking them. They go long again. And it's away by Max Meaton. And Dean Rule flicks it on. She flicked it away from Lidl and, and Shams. Cooksey's header is high rather than anything else. He's going to get another chance. And Great knock. Edwards will chase, as he always does. Very nearly gets it. Keeper had to be alert. And Farnham have taken control of this first few minutes after giving up the other chance. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if, uh, if Farnham do employ that sort of more direct tactic that we saw. And again, there you go, putting it into that area. Yeah, and Edwards will chase these all day long. And even if he doesn't win it, it can create opportunities like this for Rule, who wanted Edwards to latch onto that one, but just not quite on the same wavelength. You almost, when, it, when it's bobbling up like that, you almost just want someone to hit it this early, test the goalkeeper, despite that early chance for Shams. Goalkeepers not had to make a save yet, and uh, that was a chance with it bobbling around. Just put your foot for it, Rooley, and just see if you can get it on target. Kinane heads it to Kalu, who has time, and looks left-footed for, well, either Edwards or Rule, but finds neither of them. Sam Gray happy to go long. That's a great kick. And both Meaton and Kinane having to deal with that. Meaton comes across, and Farnham do well. Here's Karoma. Brilliant. Sanders comes in and sweeps it across to Brandon Clue, who has acres of space. Both fullbacks have had lots of time on the ball so far. Karoma. Max Meaton. Cooksey. And it's swept forward by Karoma. Dealt with by Abby. Cooper Smith looking to orchestrate something. Didn't quite come off. Yeah. Kalu. Seeing plenty of the ball early on. Little. Yeah, Kalu almost looks like he's going to be the man over on, on this side for, for Farnham in that attacking, uh, in, with that attacking threat. Sanders. Again, Farnham look quickly forward. And Little might just latch onto this one. Very nearly did. And ball stays in there. And Kalu steps in, reads the danger. Here's Sanders. Across it goes to Smith, the other fullback. Tom Farnham Smith might look nicely. for a cross. In it comes, doesn't get enough on it. And it's going to come off Dean Rule there for a goal kick. 
Farnham has settled nicely after a, you know, what was a shaky first 60 seconds, but they look to, to get a huge amount of space in these two wide areas of the overlapping fullbacks for Tom Smith and Brandon Kalou. Uh, like you said at the, at the start, though, Kalou's naturally a left sided player. You can see he's pretty much all left foot. So it's going to be interesting to, if he gets released down this right hand side, how he's going to be able to fashion a, a chance into the box like we saw Sanders do earlier on. But final started brightly. You wonder if it might be a busy night for Aggie and Oji at the back for Abby. A few balls come over the top of him, aiming for Edwards, who we know has got an engine on him. He can run all night long. Kicks the ball well, doesn't he? Goalkeeper. Kanane underneath that one. Here's Cooksley. Again looking ball. for Edwards over the top of Aggie Noji. And the defender does well just to hook that away. And it's interesting. Going to be a throw. It's interesting. Farnham probably not so typically seen putting it and hooking it long into these into these areas for Shams to to chase onto. But done it over the last two games and, and have been pretty effective. So it's probably a way for, for Jono to to, to surprise the opposition management that Farnham are going to do something a bit different than just work it from back to front. Here's Sanders looking for the early cross and it was towards Liddell. It's going to come for Dean Rule. Edwards had a chance for his left foot oh. and it's off the line. Really quick thinking from Farnham to create that chance. And that's a late tackle on Cooksley who stays on his feet and eventually does go down. What a great chance. Shams does really well to, to strike it well with his left foot, goes past the goalkeeper, and to be fair, it was quick thinking from the Abbey Rangers defender to get back onto the line and clear it, but really, really good impetus from Farnham early on here. Yeah, they wanted to take that free kick quickly as well. They so often do. Referees. So often the referee just doesn't <laughs> yeah. let it go. But yeah. it's always Sanders looking for it. Um, and interestingly... Uh, Abby leaving two men up. It's quite, quite interesting to see the different tactics from a different management when uh, when Farnham have an attacking corner or attacking free kick. See how many players that Abby keep back uh, in the attacking third. Cooksey standing over it, looking for Kanane at the back post. Kanane wins his header and it's going to drop into a dangerous area, but fell to an Abby man, and it's hooked there towards Murdoch, but. Karoma can intercept and Smith is that was a bad tackle just late more than anything else again Farnham wants to take it quickly the referee wants to talk to the player who it was a bad tackle I, I'm surprised he's not getting a yellow for that I know it was late but it, it wasn't a pretty one I think he wasn't really made a meal of I think that's probably what saved him Smith didn't make a meal of that one yeah and he's got and Smith's travelling the wrong way mm. he's, he's not making any sort of attack, attacking intent um, interesting uh, instruction already from the Abbey manager below us to stand on the next free kick. They know that one time the referee's going to let one of these go and we've seen it a couple of times this season where Farnham spring a quick attack from a, from a quick free kick. So Cooksey again will launch it forward. This time Meaton wins the header. Kenane was caught in two minds maybe. <laughs> he made great connection with it. <laughs> yeah, he's so often a danger from set pieces. Usually he's a target for Harry Cooksley. This time, Max Meaton with the flick. <laughs> Playing at centre-back tonight. Yeah, I mean, you can almost use Ryan as a bit of a decoy because he's so obviously the target and he, and he wins so many headers, both in the defensive and attacking thirds, that um, you've got plenty of other good headers of ball. I spend, especially when Farnham are full strength with... The likes of Owen Dean and Jack Dean as well. Very, very good in the air. It's clean again. Back it comes towards Max Meaton. Offside flag is up. Max Meaton going to leave this one for Pat Nash. Yeah, again, Farnham looking to take it quickly, and if they can't, they'll, they'll resort to pumping it long. Long it goes, and it's Sanders that's chasing it down. He gambled. Shoot. Little outside of the foot. 
Well, it was a great effort that just whistled wide from Adam Liddle. Well, it's nice to see shots from outside the box. And, uh, and that was a good one outside the boot. And the goalkeeper was stretching, he was beaten. But it just went past the post. It was, a, it was actually a really nice kick from Nash. Opened up the opportunity. Sanders put the pressure on the defender and Liddle was there live. Pick up the second ball and another day that goes in the top corner. Yeah, you felt Liddle's presence on Saturday on his return from suspension, a crucial part of this Farnham team. Didn't get on the score sheet, but just as effective as those that did. This will come through to Pat Nash, who's going to let it run. He's the target, isn't he? Number 10 from those goal kicks. He kicks the ball really well, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, Cooper Smith going for the flicks and Murdoch often the one running behind him. Yeah, other than that first pattern of play, Abby look like rabbits in the headlights at the moment. And there's no shame in that against Absolutely this Farnham not. team. Forward it comes from Nash. And Edwards this time gets up. Great flick. And it's flicked on again there by Sanders. And here's Dean side. Rule on the right-hand side, cutting into the penalty area. Dean Rule across the face of the goal. Brilliant. And it's flicked in by Adam Liddle. And Farnham take the lead in the 13th minute. It was very reminiscent of the goal we scored against Hawley to open it up with Shams. And this time it was Adam Liddle running across the front post. Little flick with the back of his heel and in off the post. It's one of those ones that looks brilliant when it goes in and uh, we're just about to watch it on our monitors right in front of us. I just it wondered really, if it really took a off. nick off the defender after Little's flick. Brilliant work by Dean Rule. And Little seemed to get a clean contact on it. It was, it was a carbon copy, really, of the, of the goal we scored against Hawley. And uh, it's one of those that is a crusher to Abby Hope's score in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, the perfect start for Farnham. <laughs> and it comes from a long ball. Comes from a long ball. And another assist for Dean Rule, who's really found his feet for Farnham Town as of late. A goal and an assist on Saturday and an assist already tonight. He'll be feeling good about himself. Meaton gets up. It's going to come for Tom Smith. Forward it goes. Little challenges, as does Edwards, and does really well. Looked Shamal like he was foul, but here comes Little anyway. He's challenged there. By he kind of got, got tackled by the pitch there, didn't he? <laughs> that horrible area in the middle. Come on, come on, come on. And Sanders getting back in. Farnham really hunting Abbey Rangers down. It's going to come here for King and a penny. Back to Aidan King. Abbey would just love a spell of possession, just to. Stop the bleeding here a little bit. But they go long in the end. Good header there and good control. Comes back towards Murdoch, but Great header does well to head away. A penny. Shams done really well as well. They do look dangerous, Abby, when they go forward. Number 10 and number 11, yes. Murdoch and Cooper Smith look very good. I think 14's been good when he's had the ball. They've just been limited to, to possession so far. There's nothing fancy about the way they're trying to progress down the pitch. It is very much get it up to those front two as uh, they try again here. But Kinane, not an easy man to try that tactic against. Tom Smith forward. And that's perfect for Shamal Edwards, who's got the pace here. And Shamal Edwards is in. Dean Rule's with him. Dean Rule, 2-0. Shamal Edwards deserves every single bit of credit he gets there. Really, really good. Lovely header pass the defender, beat him for pace. Made him look silly, really. And then the composure to just knock it across. And Dean Rule slots it. And God, I mean, he's been in, in miraculous form in the last two weeks. Just so clinical from Farnham. Errors punished. And this already feels out of sight. You can tell by the body language of Abbey Rangers. This was just a nightmare start. It was a really poor touch from Dean Rule. I thought he'd blown it. But it was, uh, it was a brilliant finish. A calm, collected, composed finish. Yeah, really good work from Shamal Edwards there. Final front the four cooking. And Daryl Sanders hasn't touched the ball, has he? <laughs> that's, what be, that's what you'd be worried about if you're an Abbey fan. And Farnham still hungry. Chasing every loose ball. It's not giving Abby a minute to breathe as King looks to spread it. And that's not going to find its target. 
fan of a come out to play tonight. Yeah, they really fancy it. They really fancy it. Obviously, we know the the implications of this win if if Fana do manage to cement it. Twenty wins in a row uh, will only be one behind what we can find is the British record, which is ASU Wimbledon when they reformed. Uh, in the early 2000s, in this very league, they won 21 on the spin from the start of the season. That's the record we're, we're eyeing. As a really, really good ball out wide. Edwards goes out for the header, and his pace means he always has a chance of picking up the second ball from his own headers. Thought it goes again. Lovely touch from Kenane, who gets it back from Tom Smith. Lovely football there from the Farnham duo. And now Kenane will look to pick out Brandon Kalu, who again has a lot of space. It's right a great back. pass, but it's the right idea and it moves it moves the pitch and makes it big for these Abbey players who are already looking tired. It's another switch of play. And Smith takes it in his stride and it's just going to run away from him. But a nice idea again. And I think the crowd are enjoying this one tonight so far. Just 18 minutes in, they've seen two good goals. And also thanks for for, uh, for joining us online, 250 of you. Really, really appreciate it and uh, appreciate your support over the course of the season. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please do. We live stream every single midweek fixture, home or away. Um, we, we give you nice coverage at home because we've got a nice gantry. Uh, away, we do our best uh, with what we're given. Um, but yeah, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Another breakdown of play there for Abby and Edwards is going to chase down Sanders' pass and get there with ease. Kalu backing him up. Centre back didn't fancy that, did he? No. Why would he? Lovely play from Cooksley who creates an opening. Sanders. Let's it run for Dean Brule. He'll fancy another one. Here's Tom Smith. Men in the middle here. Across it comes. It's a poor cross in the circumstances. Yeah, didn't get the right contact on that one, Tom Smith. Having a good run in the side at left back. Having missed a lot of December. And both fullbacks are really getting a lot of the ball in the early going. Meaton gets up to challenge. If you are tuned in and interested in the Leatherhead Church score, it's still 0 0. King flicks it on. Karoma's going to cut that one out though. And if you're interested in the Jersey Epsom score, Jersey have taken an early lead. Here's Sanders looking for Liddle. On the left hand side. Looking for support. Gets it in the form of Tom Smith who crosses first time. And Edwards gets a touch on it. Not the touch he was looking for. And away it goes. And a nice touch there, but Kalu alert to it. Rule. Good tackle by King. No foul. Rule comes out with it. And Watts. Bit of, bit of space here for the first time for Abby. Yeah, McLean on the right hand side. Looking to drive forward. And the cross comes in. Nash. Great take. Collects. Popular man back there, Pat Nash. Yeah, he made some great saves on Saturday, at 0-0 especially. Yeah, pivotal. And another one in the second half as well. On an otherwise quiet day, those two crucial saves. Find them love their clean sheets. They'd love one tonight as well. That's it's so clear what Abby are trying to do. They're trying to move it forward so quickly through the 10 into the 11. And, uh, and and you know they will get chance I'm sure over the course of the over the course of the evening, but it's very very clear to see how they're going to try and fashion them. Ball just ran out of play there as Edwards chased it down, and here's King for Abbey. McLean back to Aginoji, and he takes a risk. That is Shamal Edwards. Comes away with it, and he's just muscled off it there by Aginoji. Big, strong centre-back. But Edwards wins it back again. Good tackle. And he's tackled there, but great work from Shamal Edwards. 
Yeah, you turned you know nothing into something there, Shamal Edwards, as he did really with the with the second goal. So Brown and Kalu has Daryl Sanders coming short. Dean Rule also making room. It's Cooksley that receives it. His rule. And it's a corner to Farnham. And Kanane just asking Sanders to take his time. He wants to stride forward at his own pace. Ooh, is he going to take it quickly? He is. Cooksley. <laughs> Kanane's had to, had to start running. Sanders has space now to deliver a cross. It comes in low. He'll get another chance. King tackles in low and comes away with it. Sanders chases, but Abby do well to get That's out of that really situation. Well. And away it goes. Karoma wins his header. And a penny coming forward, looking to take on Kalu. Really good tackle. Really Strong good in the tackle. tackle there, Kalu. Gets a cheer from behind the goal. Meaton. Looking That's for Edwards, knock. and that's the ball that Edwards wants to gobble up. Shoot. Shamal Edwards. Oh, what oh. has he tried there? Well, he had Adam Point Little coming into the box. Sanders also supporting. And in the end, it was something or nothing. But a good ball from Meaton there to release him. It's on every time. Shams has got number six all over the shot. Yeah, this might not be an, an evening that Dale Burner remembers. He's one of his favourites. King. The one Abbey player that has been able to get on the ball in midfield. and Well, that sums up the start of the game for them. Little making the run. Can he get there? He will. Adam Little. Oh, he's done really Good well. Battle on the end there from Aginoji. He's been very busy and probably will be for the rest of the night. But that's all they've really managed to do when they've had the ball is just pump it long. And that, that's not going to. That's not going to worry Kanane and co back there at all. Nash looking for Kalu. Perfect pass and just invited King back in there a bit, Kalu. Sanders gets there ahead of Kamara. And now Farnham can break. Here's Lamar Karoma across to Dean Rule with Tom Smith on the overlap. Here's Smith. Cuts back. Abby have had time to get back in. Here's Sanders. Little. Shoot. He does get a shot off. And it's going to be a corner kick to Farnham after the save there. It was a really nice move, Ben. Like, they moved it from side to side. Got it forward quickly. Opened up the space. Really nice touch from Adam Little to get himself a bit of shooting room. And it was a good strike. It was a good save. Tom Smith's going to take the responsibility for this corner. Paul Johnson clearly wants Daryl Sanders on the ball a little bit more. Yeah, he's starting to get on the ball a bit more. Just saw, saw it there. Just makes, makes the little clever runs and opens up the angles for them. Smith with a delivery in swinger. And Kanane's at the back post. It's just going to be a bit ahead of him. And they can get it away. But it is going to be a throw in Abbey territory. So it's Farnham a Farnham ball, isn't it? Linesman called a Farnham ball. Yeah. 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 Farnham ball. Linesman wasn't 100 percent sure, but well, no, none of the players seem to be either. Which probably tells you that it was an Abbey ball. Karoma and clipped That's over. Clever. Just hooked away there. King picks it up. Here's McLean. King again. Everything going through him at the moment. For yeah, he's, he's certainly been the, the man on the ball in that deep area when he's picked it up, who's looked the most comfortable. But he's been in so little attacking areas that he hasn't really been able to make anything happen. And this Farnham press is just relentless. But they managed to play their way out of it, momentarily anyway. Still not progressing down the pitch, though, until they go long. And again, it doesn't quite come off for Abby. 
running out of ideas already, really. Hate keepers hitting it on the full. Hate it on these pitches. That's a nice touch. And can this be the moment for Abbey Rangers? Yeah, for us. Oh, and Kalu sold himself there. And a penny can deliver the cross. And a cushion there and a shot. Well blocked. Another chance though for Abbey Rangers. Great and the delivery just above Murdoch there. But some encouragement for the visitors. Yeah, for as poor as Abbey have been, you know, they're still in the game. Farnham haven't been put it to bed yet. 27 pl minutes played, only 2 0. Despite the dominance, you know, Abbey is still in there so if they can nick a goal. We saw it recently with Spellthorn. Farnham asserted a similar level of dominance and actually only went into the first, into the second half, 2 1 to the good. So, you know, the game can change on a sixpence in in these non-league fixtures so got to look out and be bright to the danger and and they do they do have you know some some talented forward players at Abbey Rangers and there's there's a reason they're third in the table indeed there is clearly got some talented players just so difficult at this ground to make any headway good win there from Burnham and kept in brilliantly by King Neaton just misplaces his pass yeah, he did well to step in, but just a bit rushed. Cooper Smith looking wide, but again, just doesn't find its target. And oh. it bobbled up there on Smith. <laughs> Picks the ball out of the ground. Shame, it was a really good chance to get Sanders free on that left-hand side. That's exactly the reason I don't want to see Pat Nash take the ball on the full. Mm. Yeah, definitely some bobbly areas on this pitch, as to be expected at this time of year. But yeah, what I would say though is our pitch versus the average is very good and it's flat. And Kanane has some defending to do and does it well. But it will come to Watts. Meaton misses the header and the shot comes in there from Cooper Smith and that's the first time really that Nash has been tested. Yeah, it was, a, it was another another missed header, mistimed header, this time from Max Meaton. You rarely see that. Um, and, you know, I, th I think, you know, Cooper Smith's been a, been a danger man already. He just hadn't really had the opportunity to get a shot away. He does there, but it's straight down Pat Nash's throat. Little and Ed Edwards both go for it. Neither of them win it. Karoma. Great touch. And now Edwards will run onto this one, but well defended there by Aginoji. Yeah, the beauty of this front two with... Lidl and, and Edwards is when they're not standing next to each other trying to head it you know Lidl comes short he's got the lovely little touches little flicks and Shams has obviously got the beating of this this Abbey Rangers defence as we've seen with the second goal so it, it plays into Farnham's strength especially when Abbey drops so um, so short Sanders making the run there he's got two men on him he finds it Back to Kalu, who just loses his footing. And it's good Kalu though. does well to get back in. Stop a penny's clearance. I think Kalu's been really good um, out of position as right back. You know, he's had he's seen a lot of the ball. He's had to do some good defensive work and, and he's and he's been level to it. Sanders, here's Little. Cooksey making a run. The ball was just behind him. And King can. Bring it the other way, and he's fouled there by Adam Little. Burnham. Back to the goalkeeper. He takes a touch before going long. Usual route. He kicks it so well. And the second ball's been picked up. He kicks it so well, the goalkeeper. It's almost like Kinane and meet in a... a, a trying to pr push up just before it goes to the keeper because I'm used to the distance an average keeper kicks it but he, he kicks it miles this goalkeeper and it sails it's sailing into sort of dangerous areas just drop off sort of another two three yards and you'll pick it up Karoma gets it back from Tom Smith and Kalu screaming for it on this right hand side Karoma might look for him now and does but the pass is going to be cut out it was it was telegraph really. And meetings come too short. Can come forward. 
Looks to cross in right footed, but Kalu prevents that. And now Cooksley, who's been maybe a bit quiet by his standards, can bring it away. Here's Edwards. Looking to take on his man. Maybe get across. Well, he's oh. looking for Dean Rule instead. Karoma. Harry Cooksley. Tom Smith giving him an overlapping run. Instead, he looks for Liddell. And he was just looking there for Shamal Edwards, a little cushioned pass. It was a really good ball in. It was a really good ball in. I think what you said about Cooksey, we haven't seen as much of him. Farnham been far more direct than normal. Like normally Cooksey, he's able to get his foot on the ball, move it from side to side, and that's the that's the style of play. Over the last sort of 90 minutes of football, we've seen far more direct Farnham, and it's obviously paid dividends in the first half an hour of this game. Yeah, Farnham are very adaptable teams. And the opposition they're facing tonight, not having much joy against them at all. King brought down by Little, referee wears play on. And goes long, Kinane right underneath it. But the header again, second ball picked up by Abby. And here's Cooper Charles. Smith. And another save there for Pat Nash to deal with, but the flag was up. It was good though from Abby. Moved it quickly from that right hand side to, to the left where they got shot off. It was offside. But, um, you know, Farnham needs to be aware of the, the dangers. It's the second ball more than anything else. We find Kanane and Meaton doing very well in the air, but maybe Abby's starting to get some joy with the knockdowns. As Tom Smith has some space. And Sanders comes to provide the option. Smith again. Cooksley, Cooksley. Cooksley. And Dean Rule. Good first touch from Rule. Kalu. Getting onto his favoured left foot. Cooksley. More patient play this from Farnham. Yeah, this is more vintage. Here's Smith. Looking for the one two with Little. Done well to turn. Cook Smith again. And the cross comes in. There's not enough on it, but he'll get another go. Sanders is on the edge of the box. Dale Sanders, he can hit them from here. He'll buy this time though. Just watch how Sanders peels off on the edge of the box. I imagine they'll try and find him, but Tom Smith is in acres of space on that far side if Lamar can move it to Cooksey. I mean, this has to be exhausting for Abby, chasing shadows at the moment. Little. Karoma. Now oh, Daryl. And here's Sanders looking to round off Shoot. this lovely Farnham move. Little! Oh, that would have been beautiful. It would have been beautiful. I didn't count the number of passes, but it was a gorgeous Farnham move. And really, it was the, the bobble before it hit Little's foot that sent it over the bar. But what a beautiful move to watch that was from Farnham. Left, right, left, right, into the pocket, into Sanders, cut it back to Little. And... Uh, yeah, you don't see pitch. football like that at this level too no, often. No, <laughs> you don't. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're being treated to this live stream. 282 of you watching tonight. Step five. This is the ninth tier of English football, I may remind you. Yeah, absurd what Farnham are doing at the moment. But still got a job to do tonight. Poor pass from Kanane. And here's Kamara. Again, Farnham looking to win the ball high at the pitch. Such a clear instruction and pattern for Farnham. Despite an unusual formation, there's such an importance in standing still in the middle of the park, especially for these attacking midfielders and Dean Rule and Daryl Sanders. Rawley in this formation with this starting lineup, far more likely to drop into a midfield three out of possession. Sanders making it a front three. Any concerns you might have had about Farnham defensively tonight of all the changes? Not seen any evidence of it. They've been, they've been really good. And that kick there from Gray, not one of his better ones. Luckily, all the cars still intact. How Farnham would love to add another one before half time. Yeah, yeah, grasp it. Cooksley. Nonchalant. Come out there, come out there. 
Cooksley again, seeing more of the ball now, and when he's got that passing ability, it's Great no touch. wonder. Here's Smith. Sanders getting more involved as well. Yeah, he's starting to get the ball, isn't he? So I said at the start, when we scored the second goal, you'd be worried as an Abbey fan. Fana have scored two without him being involved. Rule! Just too many men crowding that one out. Danger not over yet, though. Cooksey will reach this. He's just beaten two, actually, there by Cooper Smith. And forward it goes. Chased down by Murdoch, but Kenane... He'll settle for that. Gives away the throw. Does well, though, Kenane. Bought some time as well from his, for his team to get back into position. Uh, and only gave away a throw. Finding to be alive. Only about 10 minutes to go until the half-time whistle and they'll want to get in to nil. Some defending to do before that. Meaton does his job well. And it's going to be another throw. to go back to his goalkeeper and we've seen lots of pressing from Farnham no now can they force an error actually really well to get out of it and they've got numbers here Kind of sums up the first half. Yeah. Unable to orchestrate anything in the final third at the moment, Abby. Had their moments in midfield, but nothing really for Farnham to worry about. Yeah, it's been team efforts at goal, really, that have ultimately uh, been the danger for Farnham. Oh, that was a good, <laughs> a really, really good effort from Shams to put it into a great area. That's what he would have liked to have been. from Farnham to win the ball at the pitch. Sanders, Little and Edwards working tirelessly. Dean Rule shot a bit deeper at the moment. Goes. Usual script. Usual outlane wins the header. The man on shout was able to find Tom Smith. He was looking at the Abbey defenders asleep a bit there. Fortunately, it goes through to the goalkeeper. And it's going to roll out for a throw. Penny is in all sorts of space on left hand side if they can find him, but they don't. No, it's gone. Yeah, it's just going. It's completely loaded. Carry on. Rule. Looking to cushion it towards Edwards. Edwards with the slide tackle. Kalu just beaten to it there by a penny. But the perseverance pays off. 
And here's Dean Rule in space, and he's provided the goal already from that position, and he's almost done it again. Daryl Sanders coming into the six yard box. And if that was either side of the goalkeeper, it would have been 3 0. But a crucial save to keep it at two. Here comes Little, though. Karoma. Tom Smith. Sanders will be annoyed with himself that he couldn't finish that chance. Yeah, uncharacteristic. Um, but a good save, nonetheless. Meaton's touch was a bit heavy, but still finds Kalu. Dean Rule is there on the overlap, and here he is again in that dangerous position of his. Shoot. Rule! And that's another great save. And Edwards with over a kick. And how oh, it's only 2 0 at this They're stage. They're riding their luck now, Abbey Rangers. They've got Sam Gray to thank. Been very, very busy, Sam Gray in goal. A couple of important saves at the back end of this half. Meaton was patient. And Ryan Canane. Been a good night for the Farnham defence so far. Karoma. That will be a throw as we move into the final two minutes of this first half. A very satisfactory one for the hosts. Yeah, it have been good. I think the only disappointing thing, it won't, it's not more. Uh, they looked so hungry for it straight after that second goal. And obviously that Daryl Sanders chance was really, really good. Um, shame to be only going in 2-0 up. Good problem to have though if you're Farnham. Sanders has touched for once. Look, he looked to play off the shams, didn't he? Just some misunderstanding. King. His ball cut out and that little touch from Lidl just allows Cooksey to pick this one up. And that's beautiful <laughs> to find Tom Smith who looks for the cross and it's going to be a corner to Farnham Town. Yeah, Farnham, I think one of the questions to Farnham really is can and should they be more clinical as a team? Create so many chances over the course of a game. And, you know, I've never really s properly slapped anybody this season. Obviously, we had a few 6-0, six, 6-1s, six six one 1-8-0 in the Vars, but that was against a different level opposition. Uh, obviously, 4-0 has become a bit of a characteristic, but, you know, never really slapped someone when they've had so, so many chances. Cooksey's delivery. Canane at the back post, wins his header. It's only headed down rather than out. Little looking to does swoop in. Does really well, Little. Cooksey. And Daryl Sanders, is this his range? Saved again. Daryl Sanders looking to find his shooting boots, but Sam Gray equal to that one. And it looks like they will get in at 2-0 here, Abbey Rangers, despite the barrage of pressure. I think they'll be pretty happy with it. Very much so. Flick on there, just not really anybody there to pick that one up. Edwards. Don't move. Rules a little touch to Sanders. And maybe there is time for one more attack for Farnham. Smith. Little. Rule here wants us. Sanders finds Cookley, Cooksley in space and Kalu's on the right hand side calling for it. Back to Harry Cooksley. Little. Great turn. Adam Liddell looking for Edwards, who will get there. Someone needs to get to the box. And he went right across the face of goal, but Sam Gray able to catch. If he'd have parried that, would have been trouble. But he's actually played pretty well here, Sam Gray. He has. He could do nothing about either goal, really, could he? And, and to be fair, he's kept them in it. His kicking has been impressive as well. Canane. Play it long. Controls. Come on, Dean. Rule's the one chasing this one down. A penny goes back to Gray. And that is the final action of the first half. A really good one for Farnham. Goals from Adam Liddell and Dean Rule. The difference could have been more. Should have been more, really, if we're being, if we're being critical. But ultimately, it's Farnham Town 2, Abbey Rangers 0, and it's looked comfortable. It has Adam Liddell back among the goals which will please him. 
Um, and we'll stay, we'll stay with you for half time. We're going to talk through the league so far. Uh, and I'm just going to have a, look, a little look at the scores around the grounds. Uh, Epsom have got a goal back uh, against Jersey, which is interesting. Bickley scored early for Jersey, uh, but Epsom equalise. Um, the Jersey uh, tweet about it is Epsom equalised after an offside kick reaches the striker whose save shot is followed up by and scored. Right. What's the Chertsey score? That's quite an interesting one. For a multitude of reasons. One. Leatherhead nil. That's a big, big result if it continues that way. Let's have a little look at the other game in that league. Ascot United against Ashford Town. Ashford 2. Ascot won at half time um, and Ascot had a penalty saved in the 45th minute to make it 2 2. So Ashford went 2 0 up actually in that game. So, you know, some interesting games around the grounds this evening. And it's that man out there warming up, Charlie Postance, who potentially could come on and fancy a couple for himself. He will fancy. He helped himself on Saturday, didn't he? At the end, as did Kai Tanner, the man. Keep you in company out there. Probably our only two substitutes this evening, with especially whilst we're whilst we're winning with uh, Joe Jackson and Jack Dean carrying Knox, uh, two attacking options. But we've seen Kai play in uh, in the sort of Harry Cooksey role over the course of the last couple of weeks as well. But what a really fast start it was tonight from Farnham. Maybe you've seen in recent weeks it's taken them a few minutes to settle into the game. Tonight it was straight at it from the off and two early goals. Yeah, and and two really good. Farnham goals and, and, and maybe a bit different. I know we discussed it during during the first half, but they're far, far more direct and uh, and are looking to get in behind what can only be described as a slower Abbey defence than potentially a few other teams in this league. Obviously, very experienced, but Shamal Edwards is having his day out there, and the second goal especially uh, proved that. And I think also, you know, huge amount of credit. To, to Dean Rule, uh, who's been involved in both goals, both as provider a, a, and goal scorer. I think he's had a fantastic last two weeks. And uh, the goal we scored at the start was literally a carbon copy of the goal that Shamal Edwards turned into the back stick against Hawley earlier on Saturday. He seems to be playing quite wide, Dean Rule. A, a lot of his dangerous moments are coming from that sort of just inside the penalty area and the right-hand side position. No one if that's by design or whether that's just where the space seems to be open up for him. Yeah, I mean, you see Sanders will go from left to right. He'll, he'll play in you know, every position on the pitch by the end of the 90 minutes. Um, Rule is definitely keeping himself far more on this right-hand side. I'm, I'm not sure if that's by design or not. Um, Shams is, is running that, that kind of that run as well, although he scored from, from the left channel. Um, but Lidl is just such a good piece of, like, he's such a good link-up player for, for those two attacking midfielders. Just bounce the ball off, comes short, he can hold it. We've seen a few moments where he's, he's held it for a, for a second or so and then dummied one way, gone the other way, and he's opened up a bit of space. So I think that, you know, those boys in behind, Sanders and, and Rule, it just, it's, it's a joy to, to play with a player like Lidl. And then, and then Edwards, obviously, so, so desperate to stretch the defence, both right, left and through the middle. Um, that he's always going to give you a chance. And, and we've also seen, probably uncharacteristically Farnham, long balls from Max Meaton and Ryan Kane coming, coming off. And we actually scored um, that first goal from a, from a long ball. And down the other end, I mean, it is a bit of a makeshift defence. Seems to be everywhere because you said, but seems to be going pretty well. No real worries or mistakes. Or... Seems to be very controlled. And I guess that's the leadership of Ryan Kane coming. I think that... That uh, first half attacking pressing display from Farnham was excellent. You know, like they, Abbey Rangers, when they did have the ball, they had it in their like final third. You know, they just couldn't really get out, and if they could, they were just pumping it long, and it was uh, and it was Ryan and Max that were, mop that were mopping it up. So, you know, there, there's still plenty to do uh, in this second half display. But if Farnham can maintain that pressure high, um, you know, the Abbey centre backs don't look that comfortable on the ball. And when you've got like talented players around um, in that attacking third for Farnham, you know why would you be? And I think that you know you've got Charlie and Kai who are going to come in fresh and uh, and wanting to impress as well. I think Charlie for for different reasons to Kai, and uh, and, and they're going to come in with the same impetus too. So I think yes, good defensive display from Farnham, but really defending has been done much much higher up the pitch. And it just takes them closer to another milestone. It seems to be another one every week. You know, last game it was 
halfway point of the season today. It's twenty, and then it's so about that one. Wimbledon record. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's um, it's a funny one because we yeah you know, we're obviously clutching onto this record uh, because it's so impressive, and obviously we've had a bit of PR around it with Daily Mail and the Independent and. ITV News have, have picked up on it, and I'm, I'm sure if we win to, today, we'll, we'll get a bit more interest as well as that as that number continues to climb. But ultimately, it means nothing. What I would say is we had some favourable results over the weekend, uh, with um, Napil dropping points at home to Guildford, and uh, that that's not a result you would have penned in at the start of the day. And also Jersey dropped points at home to Ballam, probably a more even affair, but you know. You know, same as tonight, Jersey are drawing away at Epsom. They seem to struggle at this stage in the season, Jersey, to maintain the um, explosive start they normally get off to. And, and maybe the, the fatigue of, of travelling back and forth, back and forth, and the players, that you know, maybe availability from a, from a Tuesday night point of view becomes a struggle. But over the course of the last two years that I've watched this league, Jersey always start fast, look like they're going to be an absolute lock to challenge for the title, and then they fall away in January, February. Um, Napil, to be fair, have started incredibly well. And have again, have again uh, have fallen away at this stage of the season. They're still very much in it. But final win today, we go 11 points clear and we'll have two games in hand. And you, and you feel it's ominous from that point on for every other club in the league. And there's a lot of talk at this stage of the season, a lot of activity in the transfer market. Um, obviously, we've seen Guy Hollis leave recently and I'm sure there's lots more going on. What do you think Paul Johnson will be looking at just to get over the line in the title race? I think it's very clear that, that, that John O's done a fantastic job building a squad that can compete and at the very, very highest level of this league. And, um, and a huge amount of credit needs to go to him and, and the boys who've pulled together to make it happen. Um, if I'm if I'm honest, personally, I don't, I don't think Farnham need anything else additionally to, to get over the line. I don't think it's about that. If if new players come in, I don't I don't think that will be the strategy or the reason why. Um, I think the strategy will be looking ahead. I think it'll be looking ahead to step four. What does this squad need in order to compete at that level? And, uh, and and maybe that's where we'll see some some movement. But let's not get away from it. It's it's difficult to bring in top quality players at this stage of the season. Normally, top quality players are playing for top quality sides, and they're competing for playoffs and titles, and uh, and, and therefore it's it's hard to go and get those players. So, you know, it's um it's a busy time time of year. I think lots of the playoff teams will try and strengthen. I think they'll try and strengthen quite a lot because there's a lot more competition for those playoff places than potentially they even thought there would be mm. with the likes of Ballam, Fleet, Alton in the mix where they potentially wouldn't have been seen as playoff contenders at this stage in the season at the, at the start. Uh, I think the likes of Croydon, Red Hill, Tadley, um, <coughs> Nap Hill and, and Abbey will, will all look to strengthen. We, we've seen Jersey strengthen with two new signings in the last seven days and, and that's rare you, you rarely see Jersey sign anyone because their their pool is so limited but I think it says it says a lot that they've brought in two new recruits in the last seven days because the playoff mix is, is really getting interesting and it's not something that step five managers at this level have had to think about before hmm. tonight was obviously a bit of a free hit for Abbey but do you think do you think they're one of the real contenders have you, have you seen enough from them to feel like they're going to be right in the Knicks right till the very end I think what you get with Abbey is is a team that that grind out results. If you look at the table, they're probably they're probably over-indexing for for the amount of goals they've scored. Uh, I think their goal difference is only nine. Um, I, I certainly haven't seen anything tonight to make me think that that's an anomaly. Uh, it's very clear what they're trying to do, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but against some sides that's that's quite difficult and, and they're finding it hard tonight against Farnham especially with the likes of Kane at the back who's just going to mop up those long balls all day long what I would say is that togetherness pays at the end of the season and uh, a mishmash team full of people that aren't fighting for each other is is a team that's that's easy to break down and, and heads go down quick and uh, and it's difficult to recover when you lose a couple of games on the spin and I, and I really don't think Abbey are going to be like that. I think they will continue to just bat, batten down the hatches and make things happen. They win a lot of games 1-0. And it, at this level, that doesn't happen. And there's a, there's, a, there's a reason that this Abbey team win 1-0. It's because they're normally pretty tight at the back and they just make something happen and, and, and convert a chance at the other end. Um, so I think they'll be right up there. If I was a betting man, i put them in at fourth. Um, and I think that Croydon will come second. 
Napil will come third and uh, Jersey will come fifth in a race against Red Hill. But Jersey are in bad form as are Red Hill. So it's, it, it's, it's a real pick at the moment for that, for that top, to that, for that playoff four. Yeah, that would be fascinating to watch. And you, you mentioned there about um, players' heads not dropping and keeping together. And I think that was one of the things that was essential for Farnham after going out of the FA Vars. But, Absolutely. But, but the results and performances since, I think, are a testament to the togetherness that has been built here. What I would say is that Spellthorn game, um, which, was the, which was the league game after the Vars exit, was even more important with the manner of which they did it. Obviously... It wasn't the most convincing win. We've seen Farnham win 4-0, 5-0, 6-0 over the course of the season quite a lot. I think we've, I think we've actually had 17 games that we've that we've scored four more or more goals in, which is crazy. Um, but what what pleased me about the spell form result is it, it showed character. Where the week before exiting the Vars, we didn't show character, and it was it was probably one of our most lacklustre performances of the season. And we went 2-0 up against Spellform, very much the same as this. We looked dominant. We conceded a goal late in the first half. Then we conceded a goal. Um, early in the second half, and, and it was it was about doing the right things, and we obviously made it made it pay it right at the end with a, with a penalty, and it was that character that showed. And then we obviously roll on to Hawley, and we go and do what what we've done all season and win four 0 and uh, we're in a, in a dominant display really. And it, it never looked likely that it was going to be anything other than that. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. There was definitely a lot of glum faces after that that FA Vars exit, um, both. Uh, yeah, with with players and and people behind the scenes, but it's one of those things you just got to park it. And now we've got a job to do. We're we're doing incredibly well in the league, and we just need to make you know make sure that we get over the line now. And and the boys are doing just that. And there's another cup to play, and I think next week. Yeah, we'll live stream that. Stream. Yeah, live stream that next Tuesday. Um, here against Kingstonian, um, do get down to the Memorial Ground if you if you haven't been this season. Come and come and say that'd be a nice game to, to come along to against Step Three opposition. Um, Step Three opposition that are struggling, um, and the Surrey Cup is a really interesting cup for us because it'll be the finals played at Dorking. Um, teams like Dorking, Woking, Aldershot, Farnborough are all in the cup, so you know it. It's quite a, it's quite a good one to win, you know. And there's an opportunity for some really good matches. You know, you're getting a, a way tight woke in, it'd be, a, it'd be a decent amount of decent amount of fun. But there's there's a there's a few good a few good fixtures. Probably the pick of the bunch, if we could choose, would be Baggy Lee here in the semi final for you to plot our route. That would be a perfect game uh, for both teams. It was such a great occasion, both home and away last season. We had 1,200 people here for Baggy Lee. Uh, at home, um, beating them 2-1, and then I think they had their, their record attendance um, at their place as well. Sort of over four, five hundred people went to, to Baggy Lee uh, down the road, and we beat them 3-0. And uh, I'll never, never let them forget that. So um, <laughs> the, the, it would be really nice to, to to meet again. They've done incredibly well. Uh, we'll give them credit. They've done incredibly well in in the level above. And um, and fair play to them. You know they're they're still very much in the playoff mix at, at step four. And uh, I don't think many people would have would have said that they would have been. So fair play. Uh, hopefully we get them in the Surrey Cup, and that would be a really really nice uh, way to, to end um, a a very triumphant season for Farnham if we can get a, a couple of trophies in the cabinet. Yeah, absolutely. And the team are out early for the beginning of the second half, which can't be too far away now. It's Dean Rule struts out as well. Doesn't look like there'll be any changes. My Intel. good friend Oli Belletta, the uh, Jersey fan, is saying that Farnham are doing the God's work. Finally, he says, up the town as uh, Abbey Rangers look to drop points this evening. It's interesting. It's gone It's gone from being everybody wants to see Farnham lose to now the top Doing teams. Favor. Actually, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Take some points off the likes of Croydon, yeah. Red Hill, Abbey. You know, we've taken all six points off Tadley, all six points off Alton, potentially three points off Abbey tonight, three points off Nap Hill, you know, the, three points off Red Hill. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it all makes a difference, especially for those, those teams chasing that playoff spot. Indeed. Second half, not too far away now. And Fana would love to add more goals to their tally. Okay. 
Um, if you can drop a comment in the in the comment section below or to the side of the stream with what you think the final score will be, it's currently two 0 to Farnham. Um, and yeah, drop a comment and use this time to subscribe as well. That would be fantastic. Thank you for 175 of you for sticking around during halftime. Watch us ramble on. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back underway in the matter of minutes here at the Memorial Ground for hopefully Farnham Town's 20th win of the season and their 20th in a row. Yeah, you wonder what the halftime team talk would have been from an Abbey perspective. Not an awful lot of encouragement could have been taken from their perspective, but they've got to keep going. Well, the only encouragement is uh, they're only 2-0 down. But they'll, they'll know that, you know, they saw what happened in the Spellthorn game for Farnham. You know, 2-0 doesn't mean game over. Absolutely not. Just got to have that belief. But Farnham shooting towards the clock end, which they are famously better at. Indeed. And uh, it's filled up a bit this evening, but yeah, I, I'd say a lot of people that are interested in non-league as the neutral this evening are headed to Chertsey Leatherhead, which, as it stands, at half time is Chelsea 1, Leatherhead 0, other scores Jersey 1, Epsom and Yule 1 and Ashford 2, Ascot 1. Some predictions 5-0, 4-1, 4-0, 5-0, 3-0, 3-1. Um, lots of Farnham W's in the chat. Uh, hopefully that will be the truth in 45 minutes time. Yeah, let's hope everyone that's watching with us rather than Premier League tonight is going to get their Vindication for that decision, supporting this level of football. Like you say, Farnham attacking the clock end, usually a sight to behold. Let's hope that's the case tonight as Kinane goes long. And Dean Rule challenges. Kiefer Abbey is just not letting it get away from him in his first 10 minutes. Here's King. Tries to turn through. Are we, are we interested to see when Farnham makes subs? I think if they score a third, the subs will come on pretty quickly. Yeah, limited options tonight because of the injuries. Jackson and Dean only fit enough for the bench. And Paul Johnson probably won't want to turn to them. No, absolutely not. I think I walked past Jack Dean as I walked across to the gantry and I said, Any minutes for you this evening? He went, No. Yeah, and Joe Jackson well. didn't look a lot happier. <laughs> Would have been better off putting Frankie Hobbs on the bench. A man who's registered. Forward to go from Kinane. And Little just backed into the defender there, but gets away with it. But he is dispossessed. Good touch there from Murdoch. And the 1-2 with Cooper Smith, but good again from Brandon Kalou. Here's Edwards. Cooksley. And Farnham looking to keep possession in the early stages of the second half. Lovely pass there from Meaton to Dean Rule, whose oh, touch thought, led him down. I thought Tom Smith was just going to clean it up, but he's already bombed on. Good searching pass there from Meaton. Thank you very much, Andrea Necky, or Necchi, who's playing football manager as he watches this. I'm happy that certain teams stream their matches so I can watch this sport from other countries too. I think he's watching from Italy. Wow. Oh, that touch, not one, not one that we appreciate in any country. <laughs> By Ross Murdoch. Not one that he'll want recorded. No. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, here we are live streaming it to the world. Tom Smith. As I said before, having a good run in the team at the moment. Little again using his strength to win that. Gets it back from Edwards. Just crowded out. And a bobbly one for Gray. So no surprise that he takes a touch. And another long kick from him. Just kicks it brilliantly, I have to say. Most impressed I've been with a goalkeeper's kicking all season. Really, really good. Unfortunately, that's all they've been limited to, Abbey Rangers. Yeah, when his kicking's been their best form of distribution, they've got problems. Here's Rule. 
Smith looking down the line for Sanders, just runs out of room. And it's taken a bit further ahead than where it went out there from McLean, trying to steal a few yards. Got to try everything he can. Yeah, Farnham would just want to settle back into their rhythm that they finished the first half with. Abby will obviously have the early impetus here as they come out probably being bollocked in the dressing room. Kinane goes long. Edwards Great wins his header and it will come for Little. Just couldn't get it out of his feet, but he was brought down. And they do stand over the free kick to prevent the quick one. Yeah, seen a lot of that in recent weeks, fun yeah, looking to get on with it. It's something that refs at this level, one, don't really understand because they don't see it, and two, they don't punish teams for standing on it. And like, we want to play it quickly, obviously, and he's clearly just stopped it happening. And uh, in every other level of football that you watch on TV, that's the yellow card. Kane spreads it. Sanders has Kalu on the overlap. Brandon Kalu. It's where probably his left-footedness doesn't help Farnham Town with that right-back issue. A positive run there from the fullback. Lovely cushion header there from Karoma to Cooksley. It's the sort of thing that if Farnham go 3-0 up, I wouldn't be shocked to see Kai Tanner come in at right-back at right just to provide a bit of balance on that right-hand side. Yeah, he's played a few positions this season as Tanner. Smith with a positive run forward. It's going to be tackled there by King and it will be an Abbey throw. Bit of space in the midfield there for Frith. Only momentarily though. And he's brought Harry Cooksley down. He's in a bit of pain there, Cooksley. It was so late from Frith, I didn't even see it. Cooksley wants Kinane to bring him back to his feet. <laughs> Anthony than... Taylor, I, I, he's, I, I'm surprised he's not booked him for that. I mean, how much later could he have tackled him? I'm about to look at it on the on the display, hold on. So he loses it here, Cooksey comes away with it. And he just runs into him. Nothing too sinister. No. It's another very late one. Kinane looking down the channel for Edwards. But good touch there from McLean. And now Kamara. Oh, it's run past him. And just not quite able to make the most of that situation there. Abby. Yeah, Farnham get back to a level of comfort. A penny to King. Looking for the return to a penny. Just too much on it. That's been that has been Abby's problem, hasn't it? Then they have got into good positions and knocked it about for a you know a few passes. They've just overhit the the most progressive of them. Yeah, it's been frustrating from their perspective. Certainly not from Farnham's. I can't believe he got away with that. He's just booted it straight out of play, hasn't he? I cannot yeah. believe Little's got away with that. Getting an earful, that's for sure. <laughs> Cooksley turns and then back to Kalu. And now Meaton. Don't like that. Name. Don't like that either. And Nash yeah, kicks it first there, time. I talked about it earlier in the earlier in the commentary. Yeah, I hate, up on Nash there. Hate goalkeepers taking it on the full. And that's exactly the reason why. He probably didn't want the pass in the first place. It was a poor it was a poor decision from Max Meaton to put Ryan Canane under pressure, really. Kinane looking long. Edwards just bending his run and the flag stays down. Done well. Waits Done for the really support, well. which comes in the form of Sanders, who plays in Adam Liddell. And he just snatched at his effort. Really good football, but a missed opportunity for Adam Liddell. Yeah, you just want to keep it low, don't you, and run it across the goalkeeper's path. But really good from Shamad Edwards again. Good pass. Sanders out wide to, to Little and fashioned a chance and didn't quite convert. Yeah, that was Daryl Sanders in his favourite position on the pitch. In that little pocket of space. And he, the weight of the pass was perfect. Little's only really got himself to blame for squandering that one. 
Having already got on the score sheet tonight, Little. Here's King. Done Good really turn. Well. Round two men. But again, Farnham just managed to get enough bodies back to prevent the attack. It was the wrong decision. Shams was, Shams was the option. Shams was the option and Farnham caught out here. Yeah, driving run forward there by McLean. Brought down by Cooksley. And this time Farnham prevent the quick free kick from being taken. Yellow card, yeah. I mean, it, it is a yellow card. But you, I feel slightly aggrieved that Harry, Harry Cooksey is the uh, is the first to receive it based on some of the tackles from Abbey. I think the difference there is he, he stopped, stopped an attack. attack yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he, he definitely deserved the yellow card. Yeah, no complaints from number eight. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, it was a good run by McLean. Yes. They're going to need a lot more of that if they're going to get back into this. Yeah, but they're still in the game. They're still in the game. Eight, eight minutes played in the in this second half, and Abbey are not out of it yet. Farnham need to put this to bed. And they've not had many set piece opportunities, Abbey Rangers, so far, but this is one of them. Dealt with though, and Sanders will come away with it. His rule gets there first, and it's still in for him here. Dean Rule, and it's four on four for Farnham. Here's Sanders, Shoot. and Adam Little has some time. Cuts onto his right foot and shoots. Just took a deflection and made it easier for Sam Gray. Another chance goes begging for Farnham. I can't believe he didn't take it first time. He just could have curled it towards the far corner. He had a huge chance. It was a really good break from... Oh, Karoma judged to have committed a foul there. Maybe a bit unlucky. I think the ref bought the sound of, of the boots clashing, but I, it, it was so clearly a... He's going to book him. Maybe for descent. Well, that would be a Simbin. Jack Watts was delighted to hear the whistle there after being caught by Karoma. Yeah, it's just one of those where he just felt like it, it was it was something or nothing really. But the clash of the boots just makes that sound, and the referees stood behind the foul, and he just feels like he has to give it, especially with the the ball coming so cleanly and Farnham having a great attack, but. Yeah, you, you see them given, and, and you don't in those areas, and normally they lead to good chances. Yeah, another example of Farnham looking to win it high up the pitch. It's been a theme tonight. Yeah. And it's paid dividends. Again, Daryl Sanders, that's another assist he would have felt like he could have had. He did so everything it right. It wasn't his Darryl fault Sanders. that it didn't come to that. He did everything right. Little probably should have tested the goalkeeper a bit earlier. No foul there, Lamar. Yeah, it was good play by Kamara initially, and now by King. McLean again looking to burst forward and looking to pick out a teammate. Kalu wins another header, though. Play the ball, play the ball. Karoma. And dispossess, and Abby starting to pick up their energy a little bit. Smith gets it forward. Yeah, Time now for Watts. And King. Never a foul. And a strong challenge from Smith, but a fair one and a very late tackle. Not a clever one. Really late challenge on Tom Smith. I mean, how, how isn't it a red card? We're about to watch it in front of us. Pure frustration from McLean. This and is a really good tackle from Tom Smith. Gets the ball, and then that's... As clear as day, a red card. He's going to book him. He's got away with it. It was pure frustration and it was, it was a nasty one. You could tell by the reaction of the Farnham players, not happy with a challenge like that. No need for it. And the referee, I think, opts for a yellow card. You don't want to see challenges like that. He's going, to sign, he's going to get subbed immediately, I imagine. He's a lucky boy. Yeah, Farnham coaching staff far from happy.
There's Chang Brown coming on. Oh, and Ten coming off. Chang Brown and Danzo both being readied. And the ref just going to come over and talk to Paul Johnson now. And I think when the ref watches that one back, he'll realise he's made a bit of an error of judgment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those where you just, as a ref, you will not want to see it back. Cause it, was, it was a horror tackle and it was so obvious. You know, he, he did it out of pure spite because of the tackle before. And uh, there was absolutely zero attempt to play the ball. It was incredibly dangerous. And he's, he's, he's lucky to still be on the pitch. Little maybe just leaving one on in there. It's a corner to Farnham. Farnham need to get themselves back into their rhythm after a bit of a, a, bit of a drop in tempo with those, with those subs. Different element now with, uh, I think it's Jaden Chang on number 19. Uh, with the number 10 um, coming off, Daryl Cooper-Smith, who's been dangerous in the link up but it'll be pace now and they're, they're leaving nearly four up what can Harry Cooksey conjure up here Kanane's there oh, and we're just poor, leaning back as he made contact with the ball it's a poor header really in the circumstances he, he broke free did everything right it was a great ball in and he just needed to attack it and yeah he was leaning back he was running backwards a little bit difficult for him maybe to get the power on it that he was looking for. Kalu hooks it forward. Edwards stays on side. I think the referee, I think the system wanted to give that. And here's McLean, not the most popular man in Farnham at the moment. Lovely turn Gorgeous there. from the three. From Megan Oji. Most Very uh, confident. Most confident Abby looked on the ball all night. Yeah, that was very impressive. Ragnar Clavin esque And the free kick's oh, gonna wow. go Abby's way. Not really sure why. It was a 50-50 jump. Like you say, Farnham just need to avoid any sort of frustration from that tackle. Yeah, this is where they just need to show their their elite mentality versus the rest of the clubs in this league really and just get the job done professionally, move on to Saturday. But they're still they're still in danger here at 2-0. Yeah, they won't want it to become a feisty game either. It's just not, it doesn't really play into there. That's a good ball from Cooksley, just went a bit early there, Edwards. Flag goes up. It was a nice ball, not looking to play quickly. And those opportunities become more and more apparent as the game wears on. King, able to turn in midfield. And poor control there. Nash boots it out. Does really well there, Nash. Here's Cooksley. And that one's going to go out of play. Can Abby find a route back into this game? They survived at the end of the first half. And oh. a couple of chances here too, but another one might present one itself more. here for Dean Rule. And he's brought down in a dangerous position, actually, by Aginoji. He did well. He, he, read, he read the foul and he's just nicked around the corner, which was really a, a, a through ball to nothing. And he knew he, if, he, if he could jump up in the air well enough, he'd, he'd buy the foul. And it, it was a foul all day long, really. And the ref knows he owes Farnham one, really. And I wonder if this might tempt Cooksey or Sanders into an effort on goal. I'd be shocked if Harry Cooksey's given the ball. I really, really would. He might be used as the, the dummy run, but I'd be shocked if Daryl Sanders doesn't hit this ball towards the top left corner. Yeah, he's putting it down within 10 now, for number 10. Last time we saw him take a free kick. He raised the roof. He raised the roof. This one a bit closer. That goal. wall is not even close to 10 yards back. Keep going, Raph, I think. Keep going. The stage is set for Daryl Sanders. He's the only one standing over it. And he's very capable from this distance. Wonder if he goes towards the goalkeeper's side. 
and how he strikes it. Because the last time he struck, it was so much more central the last free kick he took, and he had to kind of hit it with a bit more dip and and swerve. It's Daryl Sanders for Farnham, and just couldn't find the target that time. Good effort. Good effort. Went for power rather than precision, really. Goalkeeper didn't move. No. It's a cliche, but obviously it's very hard to get it up and down from that sort of range. Yeah, his last one was a bit further out, wasn't it? But you feel like more opportunities will come for Sanders as this game opens up. Abby have to commit at some point. And maybe the substitutes will be the instigator for that. They're going to get a throw in here. I we still believe though, they know they can they can force openings, and they're a good side, and they'll know if they can get a goal here, they'll they'll fancy themselves to grab another. Sanders just backs into Kamara, and uses his body. If he doesn't book him for that, I don't know what he will do. Draw the foul, and the referee is keeping his cards pocketed. Is he? He's probably going to talk to Kamara. I mean, he'll do incredibly well to get away without a book in there. Yeah, just a talking to you about the looks of things. Crazy, crazy. Abbey Rangers have had zero bookings so far today, and how that was no different to the Harry Cooksey one earlier, I've got no idea. Yeah, the only exception being the McLean yellow, which obviously should have been more than that. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. I don't even think about that tackle as a yellow card. Canane calling for it. And it's aimed towards him. Wins his header. Just doesn't get much on it and no chance really for Edwards to... Yeah, I think the management are a bit, a bit annoyed, annoyed that that Kinane keeps dropping wide uh, in those in those attacking areas um, for, for when Farnham do load the box. Cause it's, it's so difficult to generate enough power to get it back across goal. And actually they want him a bit more centrally inside the goalpost, causing the goalkeeper a bit more problems. You want to, at this level, you want to make the goalkeeper think about coming. He's, he's so unlikely to, to, to grab it and, and keep hold of it. Wow. Yeah, lovely connection there from Meaton. Almost too good. It evades Edwards. Who you think must be getting a little bit tired out there. He's been chasing down a lot tonight. Good knock that. Kane gets up and wins both first and second ball. That's a poor clearance though. Yeah, Watts picks it up. A penny. King again. No updates at the race course ground. Ascot one, Ashford two. Kamara. At the, Reg, at the Reg Madrick. A bit of possession, but Sanders swoops in. And Daryl Sanders scores! Having missed a few opportunities earlier, Daryl Sanders gets his name on the score sheet and it's Farnham three, Abbey Rangers nil at the clock end. Absolutely fantastic from Farnham Town. It was a great finish and it never looked like he wasn't going to put it in the back of the net and he caressed it into the bottom corner. Daryl Sanders back on the score sheet after a couple of weeks. He'll be absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, I mean, he had men in support, but he, only, he was only going to do one thing with that. And that will be... The final act for Shamal Edwards. I said he's been working tirelessly tonight, chasing down every lost cause. And now Charlie Postance against his old club. He Can. will be desperate to score. Uh, just going around the grounds as well. In the Reg Madrick at uh, Epsom versus Jersey, it's 1 1, which will be of interest to this league. And the other game, which is of huge interest across non league, is Chertsey against. Leatherhead. They haven't updated their Twitter feed for 55 minutes. I imagine it's still 1-0. One 1-0 nil. One nil to Chertsey. So, it's a familiar situation for Farnham. 3-0 up, second half, a second the clock end, looking for some more goals. Possence coming off the bench, looking for his fourth in a 4-0. <laughs> like he got on Saturday. <laughs> he won't mind it in this one. He won't mind it in this one. He will be right up for getting on the score sheet. He's capable of any goal celebration if he puts it in. He scored 35 goals for Abbey last season. Abbey were absolutely furious to leave, lose their uh, top goal scorer at the summer stage. And, uh, and it will be 
really fitting for Charlie Possens to crown off this Farnham display with a goal against his former, former club. He's got about 22 minutes to find it, plus stoppage time. Smith calling for this one. Nash instead looks for Daryl Sanders. Loose ball's picked up by Abby, but again, the, the final pass just not finding its target. That's a nice touch from yeah, Watts. Well Kamara gives that it away to Liddle. And Farnham always oh, seems to Lids. have numbers in those situations. Lids was a huge chance. King and Cooksley battling. Farnham come Brilliant. away with it. Brilliant from Farnham Town, lost it. Lids will be really disappointed with that touch. Little, the target for this one. Postance gets up and clatters into Aginoji. Sanders has it. Smith making the overlapping run. Here is Smith. Sanders again. Driving into a shooting position, perhaps. Here's Little. And now Dean Rule. Great pass that. Kalu outside of him. Sanders, Sanders. inside. Daryl Sanders. Looking for Postance. Is this his first chance? <laughs> uh, his touch, not the best, maybe too eager there. It, wa it, it wasn't a great pass from Sanders in the end. It, it kind of played uh, Charlie Postance into an area where we don't really want him. We want to keep him in inside the six-yard box tram lines. And uh, that wasn't it. Yeah, another change being prepared here for Abby. Jack Carrad, the man. About to come on. <laughs> and it's uh, Jack Watts who makes way. Is he the yellow card guy? No, that was uh, Is he McLean. still on the pitch? It feels like the moment's passed for that. Oh, he still manages to get it clear. I mean, he's... he's <laughs> Kicking is fantastic. That was another port. He's in here. And King has played it in. A chance here for a route back into the game for Abbey. And what a finish that is by Murdoch. And Abbey are back in business. 3 1. And it came from absolutely nothing. Kinane's pass went astray. And Abbey Rangers have wiped out Farnham's clean sheet at the very least. It was a really good finish. It was, a, it was an uncharacteristic mistake from Kinane, really. Um, came from nothing. But Farnham needs to be careful here and just needs to steady the ship. Beautiful finish from Murdoch. Had a lot to do. He knew as soon as it left his foot that... It was a great ball, ball over the top though. And uh, yeah, Nash, Nash was, uh, was caught out. Yeah, he'll be devastated to lose that clean sheet. As will Kinane, the perfectionist, but he'll know it was his mistake that caused it. Yep, look, look, test for, for Farnham here to keep it solid for five minutes. Um, Abby are going to feel like their tails are up. Chance for them to get another goal back and really cause this game to go into a, a different feeling. McLean cushions it to King. And mi miscommunication there with and McLean and King. And those are the things that will halt that momentum. Yeah, smile on the face of King. He knows that as much as anybody. The next few minutes, crucial for both teams. Farnham looking to re-establish control. Looked like they were just going to romp to maybe a route of some kind. They still might. Yeah, they've got, they've got time. Um, they just need to rally back from, from where they were five minutes ago. You know, it was a, it's a freak goal, really. It was, a good, it was a good goal, but it was a freak goal in the in the grand scheme of the, of the game um, and it was well taken and that's that kind of proves to you why Abby are up there you know really in this first half they created one or two that was the first clear cut chance and, and they um, and they put it in Nash looking here for Postance who turns and plays it through to Little an interesting ball and Little gets on the end of it it's a really nice touch turns back waits for support Still Adam Little and plays it across. It's cut out, but it will come to Max Meaton and now Brandon Kalu. Maybe a bit more defensive minded in the second half, Kalu. Across it comes to Tom Smith. This is, this is what Farnham needed after that little shock. 
Just a bit of possession back to where they were. Meeton again. And Kalu. Here's Dean Rule. Harry Cooksley looking for Little, who's dropped deep. Cooksley again. Good move this from Farnham, but Aginoji steps in to halt it for now. Here's Meaton. Switches the play to Daryl Sanders, who great touch. will cherish this amount of space. And here's Postance back to Sanders. It was nice. It was a nice move. Kalu. Been good in the air tonight, Brandon Kalu. Needs to be careful here, though. Yeah, here come Abby. Meaton happy to. Yeah, very good from Max Meaton. Clear his lines. And Farnham. Need to be careful, but it looks like Abby have an injury concern. It's Kamara who's down. And they've made three changes already. Have Abby. I think it might be cramp. Yeah, it's cramp. A team of two. Physios go onto the pitch. Kai Tanner gets his shirt ready. Yeah, and he could come on anywhere, really, Tanner. Mm, maybe Dean Rule has run his race. <laughs> Sanders won't want to come off, that's for sure. Um, don't think he'll change the centre midfield duo after going, like, getting that goal back, uh, Abby. I think your most likely sub is, is Lidl or or rule and Lidl's change would see probably Sanders go up up, up, up top um, limit his running um, and, and Kai just to give a bit more energy in the middle that's what I'd expect um, but you can also do that by taking off Dean Rule and yeah, then maybe just plotting their next moves down there the coaching staff yeah, Farnham just need a player, and Kai's perfect for it, just to come and pick up the second balls. You know, there's, it's, it's got a bit scrappy in the middle, you know, with the, with the fatigue, um, and, and Farnham just need to, to pick it up um, and control the game like they were only 10 minutes ago. They will, there will be more chances in this game, that's for sure, in the last 15, 20 minutes. And they are going to make another change, Abby. Danilo Cadet. Good player. Good player. Surprised not to see him start, Danilo. Played for Badshot Lee last season. Shearwater. Good, good player. <laughs> Just going through his checks down there, the linesman. Who's come off? I think Kamara's gone off. He's hobbling over the other side of the pitch. He's going the wrong side, isn't he? Yeah, it looks like he is coming off for So Lombre. a midfielder he's off. He's going to take his shirt off. He is, he's going to reveal another white shirt. That's of absolutely no use to anybody. <laughs> McLean looking for the substitute and here he is he's a tricky player Danilo Cadetti he's got a bit of space there if he can find big huge amount of space here and Cadetti shoots Just spoons it over the bar yeah, but, but signs of Abby growing into the game late on. Yeah, Farnham will want to turn the momentum back their way. About 13 minutes of normal time remain. Still 1-0 to Chertsey against Leatherhead. Still 1-1, one, one, Epsom against Jersey Bulls. And still 2-1 to Ashford Town against Ascot United. And 
Kai Tanner is about to be introduced. And Dean Rule's evening comes to an end. Another really, really good display for Dean Rook. Yeah, goal and assist for him. Same as Saturday. Yeah, I thought, I thought Rooley was really, really good tonight. Um, again, huge impact on the game. Scored his goal, set up another one, and uh, you know, been a vital player over the last few weeks for Farnham Town. Come back after, I think he'd admit himself a bit of poor form, but uh, really, really started. Um, started well this season and, and got back into the swing of things. Kalu draws the foul there and he's being pushed around a bit. Yeah, if I just need to keep the heads here. Probably 10 minutes, 10 minutes or so to go. And it will be Postance and, and, uh, and Tanner who are, are looking to, to make the impact over the next 10 to 15 minutes. Can Postance get that opportunity. You'll certainly fancy it here. Yeah, Cooksley's going to send this one into the danger area. And it goes towards Ryan Kinane, who wins the header. Almost came to the little bit. I think Kinane's going to be penalised for a push. And Abby, uh, a lot more quicker about their business now. Kinane wins his header. Cadetti challenged by Tanner. No foul. And swept forward there by Little, which Possence will chase. Just not going to get there. He looks quicker against Abby for Charlie Postance. Another kick. Hoof forward. Oh, it's a silly header from Brandon Kalou. Didn't need to do it. Didn't need to do it. Kai, come out! Kai, come out! Approaching the final 10 minutes. Farnham with a two goal cushion. Abby having pulled it back to 3 1, will look for some more encouragement, but Farnham are looking dangerous the other way at times as well. Possence chasing it down, but a good turn. Was a good turn. And they've got to be aware. Jesus. Smith heads it back to Meaton, who just tries to clear his lines. Farnham. Put themselves under pressure here, really. King. A penny. Looking to take on Cooksley, maybe get a cross in from that left flank. A penny loses out there. Does well, does well on that far side to win win the ball back. It was looking like a dangerous area, but a bit of experience and Farnham turn over the possession. And it's the little moments like that that are going to be crucial to wind just, this clock down. Yeah, it just slows the game down, which is ideal for Farnham. You know, done done nearly everything they need to do. That's good knock on. Yeah, Sanders flicked it behind and Tanner gets on the end of it, just looking to prod it back through to Sanders. Here's Smith. Lamarca Roma turns back. Yeah, that's good. And goes back to Smith. Sanders and Little both moving around in front of him. Farnham, no need to take any risks at this stage. Cooksley. And now the captain, Ryan Kinane. Smith wants to play it forward and goes long and Postance is the one that's going to get on the end of it. Charlie Postance. He's desperate, Charlie Postance. Here's Little. Maybe a cross would be ideal for Postance at this stage. That's what Little provides. Oh, cross. Doesn't beat the first man. Meaton. Brandon Kalou. Yeah, Farnham looking tidy in possession at better the Better now, yeah, much better. After a spell of looking less good. Farnham needs to keep moving the ball quickly, though. Sanders dropped very deep. Smith calling for it. He's incredibly high up, Tom Smith. He's basically playing left wing. Again, Farnham just not quite. That. Oh, I hate those, honestly. I hate them. I count them. Almost close my eyes as it goes back to the goalkeeper. All good on that occasion, though. But here come Abby. Just a poor touch there from a penny. I'll try and keep you up to date with these scores as it goes late in the game. Farnham obviously 3-1 to the good. Jersey still drawing away at Epsom. There'll be some teams watching on, hoping that that result stays the same. 
Chertsey have conceded a goal late on. Leatherhead now 1-1 at Chertsey. Tanner battling for it with King, but King emerges. Meaton intervenes and Possence will get up for this one. And again, the touch there of the Abbey player lets him down. Again, the ball comes back to Pat Nash. A little nudge there, maybe, by Little gets away with it. He's got to, help. got to have some help, though, Kai Tanner. Yeah, outnumbered there. But won't give up. King. Ticking into the last seven minutes. Great Sandish touch. Looking to pressure great away. touch. Had to be a great touch. Chance for Abby here. Here's Cadetti. Moving with pace. And getting the cross in. It's a good one. Just nobody attacking it. Yeah. So many people back. But they still have an opportunity here. Oh, is that ball still in? Frith. Stood up towards the back post. Nobody in the middle there, which is surprising. Given their need for goals at this stage. And Nash can take his time. Thank you for the 257 of us, for 257 people joining us uh, online this evening. I really do appreciate the support of Step 5 Football. Sanders uses his body well, but defended. Almost, he, he took a touch that he didn't need to take. So that's oh, a brilliant that's a touch. lovely touch from Sanders, and Liddell's going to get on the end of this one. The crossing route has been cut off, but he can come back and find Karoma. And he wanted a foul, not given, and there's a chance here in transition. Murdoch has an overlapping run from Cadetti, which he uses. Murdoch again. Well, I need to track the run up. Oh, and the cross is well over here. It's going to stay in, though, isn't it? It is. And Carrad picks it up. Farnham just needs to keep their concentration. Kalu defending and conceding a corner in the end. Five minutes of normal time remaining. Farnham just need to keep their heads and do the sensible things right. Yeah, they're very close to what would be an important win, their 20th win of the campaign. It would put them 11 points clear at the top of the table with two games in hand. Really would be important, but there's some work to do still. 3-1 to the good, but Abby score here. They take it short, and a penny shoots there. So wasteful when they had so many men up. You think that they'd want to put the ball into the box, put it underneath the crossbar, make Pat Nash work. And they haven't done any of that. They'll be disappointed with the quality of the chances that they've created since the goal. Or the yeah, they, they had that sort of 60 to 90 seconds of impetus after the goal. And then that, it was that pass down here right in front of us. Just misplaced, out for a throw, and it just killed that momentum. They've acquitted themselves reasonably well. Second loss has been good from Abby. Uh, they took their chance. Someone in the comments did predict 3 1. Seems to remember. But there's still time for more. Postance, good feet from him. And uh, yeah, he probably gets away with that one. Probably gets away with that one. It wasn't, didn't look like a foul to me, but he did well to buy it. And it will be another set piece opportunity which he'll lap up. Appreciate Mal Thomas in the comments. Dean Rule is magic. You're right, Mal Thomas. You're right. Yeah, hard to deny that, what we've seen in recent weeks. Mal Thomas partnered Dean Rule last season for Baggy Lee. And is now, after having more clubs than Tiger Woods at the Masters this season, is settled at Sutton Common Rovers. Wish you well, Mal. Cooksley launches it. That's a good knock, that. And it comes out to Tanner on the edge. Just chance here, out chance there. here. Chance and here for Abby. They have numbers, Abby Rangers. They had a really good piece of defending from Brandon Kalou. Yeah, there was a two on two situation that almost presented itself. Brandon Kalou's played well tonight at right back. <laughs> Filling in for Joe Jackson. But no problem at all. For Farnham defensively. 
Maybe a bit late there, Kalu, though. Yeah, a bit late. Probably not the right thing to do. Allows Abby to load the box. What Worth also saying that Farnham get two players back uh, on Saturday. They get Lewis Flatman and Owen Dean, who've combined for over 23 goals so far this season. Uh, so, you know, obviously goal scoring impetus to come back into the team. A bit of depth as well. I think what Farnham have been so good at this season is being able to change the game off the bench and less so when you've only got two options. In, in, uh, and it goes all the way through. Can they miss this kick? Still a chance. Cadetti on the edge. Oh, Sanders really well. swoops in and he releases Liddle, who's going to race with King here. And he might get this, Liddle. Chance here for Adam Liddle to round off a victory, but was indecisive. Fon just needs to be careful. They don't overcommit. Cooksley back to Meaton. And that will do at this point. Little, Dutch, little should do better there, really. He, he did so well to win the ball. He, he just needed to get the shot away, and he, he just took too long. A loose touch there from Cooksley, and we are now in the 90th minute at the Memorial Ground. Farnham just a few minutes away from another big win. And that's another mistake from King. Sanders, Poston, Poston! <laughs> laughs below us from the Abbey bench. They knew that was his moment. They knew that was his moment. Cooksley. Sanders knew he was offside, so stays away from that. Goes for the second ball, though. Sanders wide now to Liddle. Can somebody create an opportunity for Postens? That was as good about. That was as good a one as he's going to get. That was beautiful, Cooksley. Liddle. <laughs> They're calling for it on this left flank. I don't blame them. Sanders there was... receives it, and that's a lovely ball now for Smith, who has all the time in the world to pick out across Tom Smith low, and Tanner's. Miscontrol presents an opportunity for Liddle to make it four. Kai Tanner with the assist. I'm not sure how much he knew about it, but a lovely finish from Adam Liddle, who's deserved his second goal this evening. And 4-1's probably a fairer reflection on the display this evening too. Yes, yeah, Sanders and Smith had so much space on this left flank. There was always the opportunity that they create something. And somehow, some way, Tanner teed up Adam Liddle to make it 4-1. Two on the night for Liddle. Great display from him. And Farnham are going 20 from 20. <laughs> Kinane has a bit of banter with the Abbey bench. But it's Farnham that will be all smiles tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, d despite one, one freak goal, freak chance, it's been all Farnham this evening. And this is a real marker down for the league. It's another team at the top of the table absolutely dispatched and uh, and people will be looking on and thinking it's champions elect really it's a matter of matter of when not if so just the last few moments now we're into stoppage time Abby know they're beaten not disgraced themselves tonight by any means the qualities just showed yeah I, oh definitely not disgraced themselves Abby you can see you can see they're a well organized team um but they just haven't had the quality to create the chances this evening that Farnham have. Yeah, and that was a misplaced pass from hey, Farnham or one another. Yeah, really good football from Farnham, just frustrating. Abby. What was that? <laughs> He's got away with it. Kalu. Kalu, I think, has been really good. Done his job out there. Not tried anything special. Been sensible in possession. Defended well. I think he's been good. Tanner takes it to the corner flag. My man of the match probably be Adam Little. I think he's worked, worked the channels incredibly hard. Was uh, was pivotal to the early goals. I think Dean Moore was also really, really good tonight. Um, but Little obviously got two goals um, and has made a lot happen up there again, winning the balls. 
high up. Costa's That's not Postas' game. No. That's not his game. That is, though. Yeah, lovely touch. Oh, that was Sanders good. That was good. beyond him. Smith with a good tackle. Karoma. Sanders wants it from Cooksley. And he's tried to pick him out. Again, OG deals with it. Cadetti. Again, outnumbered. Brilliant from Cayetana. Just so busy. Play, 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 play. Little. Tanner. Have they got one more in their locker? Karoma. They won't mind this, Farnham. Yeah, lovely football. Really good football from Farnham Town. Opens up that space. Kalu. Sanders. Again, Smith has lots of space. The uh, Abbey right back is really tucked in there, McLean. And the cross comes in for Smith. Postance just won't be able to attack that one. It was too close to the goalkeeper. His opportunities. Oh, he's away. Had, he had his chance, Charlie Postance. He really did. And he, he almost saw his name up in lights and scuffed it really straight down the keeper's throat. He'll be gutted. Gutted. He's actually been very good since he's gone up there, Charlie. We've had four minutes of added time. Won't be too long left. Farnham having hit four on Saturday have managed it again tonight. The 18th time this season Farnham scored four more goals. They've only played 32 times. Can't argue with those statistics. Viewers have been treated to a goal fest tonight. And also some lovely football. I know the, there were some moments in the first half where Farnham just looked a cut above. Um, didn't manage to get the goal in, the, uh, in those moments, but... Postance chase it down. Again, not quite his game. <laughs> oh, the, the comments below me have touch <laughs> as he boots it out for a goal kick. Classic. They're gonna have, they're gonna have a have a field day with him uh, in the clubhouse afterwards. But it will be Charlie Postance who will be smiling the most. And the referee brings to an end another successful night for Farnham. They have beaten Abbey Rangers by four goals to one. It's 20 wins from 20, and a statement performance from the league leaders. And to ground up the, the, the results, Bickley scores late on for Jersey to get three points away at Epsom and Yule. And if they have finished their games, Chertsey score in the 89th minute to make it 2-1 at home against Leatherhead. That was a massive result in that league. And 2-2, a goal late on. A goal late on for every single game that we were following. A goal late on for... A uh, goal late on for Ash Scott against Ashford, making it 2-2. Two -two. That was in the 86th minute, um, and it was Harris who scored. So 2-2, two -two, Ash Scott versus Ashford. 2-1, Epsom and Yule against Jersey, with Jersey coming away with three points. And 2-1 to the curfews, Chertsey against Leatherhead. And it was 4-1 to Farnham Town. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you live next Tuesday, a week from now, back here at the Memorial Ground against Kingstonian in the Surrey Cup.